Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And this is a paid request from Jacob. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I do have a Cash App as well. I'll get to that as soon as, I, as possible, really. It could be for a topic, reaction, commentary, random thoughts, topics, tier list, rankings, video game playthrough for an hour, or full playthrough, whatever the case may be. I get to as soon as I can. Thank you for those who have sent them. And we'll see how it goes. So Jacob wanted me to do a commentary on a 1993 film called The Pickle. Which I had never heard of this film before. I know nothing about this film. I guess it's directed by Paul Mazursky, which he directed a couple films that were nominated for Oscars. Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice back to the day. Uh, he did the film Down and Out in Beverly Hills, which I've heard of with Richard Dreyfuss and Nick Dolte. That was a box office hit, but I've never seen that film. Really, the only film I've seen of his was Moscow on the Hudson with Robin Williams, which I actually did not mind. I actually did not mind that film. And he only did two films after this. Faithful with Cher and Chaz Palminteri. And Yippee, which was a documentary. So, Sally Directors passed away. He passed away 2014. I know the stars Danny Aiello, which I really enjoy as an actor. Loved him in the 1990 film Jacob's Ladder. And with that said, we'll see how this goes. I'm pause at the beginning. I've never seen this film, so there may be times I'm silent, trying to listen to the dialogue and stuff. I'll do my best, but we'll see how this goes. Three, two, one, pressing play. Thanks once again, Jacob. I appreciate it. All right, so we have the Columbia Pictures logo, which I should know this, but I wonder what happened to Columbia Pictures. I mean, you definitely don't see that logo anymore in front of films. I did look at what apparently the plot of this film is, which it sounds somewhat interesting. Dana Aiello plays a director where his last film was a flop. So he decides to sell out and do this sci-fi film called The Pickle, where there's not much merit, but he needs a hit. He wants to direct this other film starring Dustin Hoffman. So he's hoping with this film being a hit, he'll be able to do that. <clears throat> But, I mean, we'll see how this goes. A lot of familiar names here. Diane Cannon, I recognize. She was in this film, Out to Sea, with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Chris Penn, may he rest in peace. He was in Best of the Best 1 and 2. And, of course, Sean Penn's brother. Always liked Chris Penn. Passed away way too soon. I saw Shelley Winter's name in there. She was in The Delta Force. She was in The Poseidon Adventure. Stephen Tobolowski. I always remember him as Ned Ryerson in Groundhog Day. Ned, and then Bill Murray punches him, <laughs> knocks him out. Uh, Ali Sheedy. Ali Sheedy was, uh, not shitty, Ali Sheedy was in Short Circuit. She was in The Breakfast Club. Now, this film was a box office flop. So it's funny, this movie's about a director who made a flop, and then this film came out and flopped. And it has like a 4.4 .4 out of 10 IMDb, so... This is not a beloved movie. Interesting opening titles where it's done in this different type of animation showing the planets, the stars, I guess, for the sci-fi movie within the movie. Then now we're going to a galaxy. Okay, so we got a bit of a galaxy here, and of course a giant pickle. Well, I guess it's called the pickle. <laughs> I 
I didn't direct a movie, I committed a crime. <laughs> I made a commercial movie, I made toilet paper. <laughs> so Diana, Danny Aiello made a movie that he feels is bad, he knows is bad. So on the right there was Jerry Stiller, it seemed like his agent, Jerry Stiller, he was in Seinfeld, The Teen of Queens, among other stuff. Like I said, I do like Danny Aiello as, a, as an actor, liked him in, I mentioned Jacob Slider in 1990, he was in Do the Right Thing, he was in Hudson Hawk, he was fun in that. Even in the movie The Stuff, which he probably can't see because there's a poster here but behind it there's the prop from the stuff <laughs> Why put that white haired guy? He died two years ago. It is interesting whenever they have these like fake movies, like you gotta come up with these titles that try to really stick with people like Blue Dust and things of that nature. So Paradise Jack was the was like the last big bomb he had. So the fans liked it, but it didn't do well. Try to think what movies have there been where the fans really enjoyed it, but it was a box office bomb. Dread. The Judge Dread movie, Carl Urban. I heard nothing but praise from me. Well, yeah, me, but my friends, fans. But it, it bombed, so. Got Evian Water. I don't know if they make that anymore. I would assume they do, but. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. I would don't say there must be a reason why this cactus is here. <laughs> Those all stick out like what the hell does this guy have a cactus for just for that moment. He's got like little cacti on the desk and big ones here. I don't know why anyone would want a cacti. They're such ugly plants. Ugly as hell. They just, maybe if you have a cock infatuation. But that looks like dicks and balls behind them. Like you have the dick and then you have the little balls. So farm kids. So 
so farmers grow cucumber and one keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger and becomes a damn spaceship So wait, I'm a bit confused. I thought they already made the film. Okay, yeah, the clothes are different, so this is a flashback. Okay, this is a flashback. Because his clothes are very different. I didn't even notice we were in a flashback. That's my screw up, I guess. Because like, he already made the film. The premiere's tomorrow, but... Now we're, okay. I mean, this idea would never be a hit. I do like this. I do like being on the movie within the movie set. <laughs> How the I can imagine is how much tension is on a movie set. You always hear these stories. <laughs> the guy has a t-shirt of a pickle. <clears throat> pickle juice. <laughs> I don't know if it... I don't know if anyone would be laughing at the director or they'd be worried about getting fired. <laughs> wow. And a random appearance by Donald Trump. Ooh, this film would get canceled today. So I guess they filmed near Trump Plaza, so Trump's like, I got idea a cameo. <laughs> wow, that was a, I did not expect Donald Trump to fucking pop out. But this is what he was trying to get a little bit in the movies. He had a cameo in Home Alone 2, and then this, which apparently in some versions of Home Alone 2 now, they edit Donald Trump out. I'm like, come on. Let me say this. Do I like Donald Trump? No. But at the same time, this overwhelming, over-the-top derangement syndrome people have of the guy is totally ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like, you know, he's been shot at like two times. If you, if people voted for him, family members and friends are like, considered him to be vile human beings. It's so ridiculous. It's so stupid. It's so numbskull in terms of mindset. It's just ridiculous. The dumbest shit. <clears throat> uh, as a hardcore fan, I guess. I don't know if I want to have sex with this lady. She seems like she'd be. Huh? Oh shit. Got her titties out. Okay, maybe I changed my mind. <laughs> I think I changed my mind with how forward she is. And she's got a good looking body. I gotta admit. And she's pretty assertive and take control. I mean, if she don't do all the work, okay. See, so yeah, the movie just kind of goes back and forth between 
modern and flashback like very like that and at times it's almost a little bit like whiplash because it goes from they're getting to the motel room then all of a sudden it's the pitch then all of a sudden they're making a movie now we're back to here there's not like a transition there's not any different lighting ever any different like oh it's done in black and white But yeah, this whole idea of the movie, The Pickle, it would never be... I know you say there's a lot of movies that have, like, a dumb idea, but at the same time... I think that's too dumb of an idea. Like, if it was a creature movie where it's, like, it's a monster and, uh, maybe... It's... It's one of those scenes where it's like, okay, we gotta be so ridiculous, we gotta be so over the top that you gotta, people have to know that we're making fun of dumb ideas in Hollywood that is so dumb, it's so ridiculous of an idea. And it's like, well, that idea would be made maybe on an independent film in the vein of like Cat Nato. Like, there's a, yes, there's a movie about Tornado of Cats, there's. Your Piranaconda. It'd be like a low budget, like independent film where maybe some people know, yeah, it's crazy, but Crazy Cells. Nowadays, you'd be like, yeah, Crazy Cells. Remember those short dado movies? Yeah. People love how weird and stupid it is, and they'll go see it. Major feature. But maybe if they try to be more subtle, maybe they think people would not get the joke. There's Diane Cannon. Which, again, she was in Out to Sea with Jack Lemmon and Walter Mouth. Which I remember now minding that film. <clears throat> that was what they did after Grumpy Old Men was a hit. So they tried to put him in a series of films. There was a sequel, Grumpy Old Men. The Odd Couple 2, Out to Sea, and I think the sequel was a hit, Out to Sea, made less money, and then The Odd Couple 2, which I liked, that was a flop, but. <laughs> so Huckleberry Finn is what he wanted to make like a tougher version about a battered kid well, I just to be honest they still haven't made that type of film they've been Disney family fair with Huckleberry Finn but not that what is this his daughter no. 
I'm hoping not with that kiss. So is that like his mistress or something? Well, it's like his girlfriend. She definitely seems a lot younger than him. <laughs> he obviously wants to keep this lady a bit of a secret. Sounds like she's from Paris or something. I mean, first impression so far, eh. As I said, Daniel is the lead. He's okay. I mean, he's a great actor. But, now, who's this person? Oh, his daughter and then grand, yeah, grandkid. <laughs> the girlfriend looks younger than his daughter. <laughs> Shit. His daughter looks older than his girlfriend. I guess that's the point of it. <laughs> I don't think the kid understands what the hell you're saying. The kids, I don't give a shit about this big panda woman will do with it. It's bigger than me. This is one of these daughters that doesn't call him dad, calls him his name. Why is he so pissed off at this girl? Like, he seems out of the blue. Like, what is the deal? Why is he so mad about this girl? Why is he so pissed? She seems like a sweet lady. She's done nothing wrong. Yeah, get the hell out of there. Fuck this guy. Or they don't give at least some explanation. I'm assuming later on as to why he's so hostile towards her. Makes you think, why the hell, what the hell did she see in this character? To deal with his sorry ass. Maybe you should take that and calm the fuck down. Okay, we get an explanation. What is your major malfunction?
now you want to touch her. Now he wants to cuddle with her. What the hell? Is he schizophrenic or something? Who is, like, I'm wondering what age she is at this point. Let me see. I'm guessing this is Clotilde Corral. Okay, she's 55 years old now. So 1969 she was born, so 70, 80, 90, 3, 23, 20, so about 24 years old. Harry Stone film, The Pickle. <laughs> so it's interesting, we see the opening titles of the film within the film. Oh, Griffin Dunn's in this film within the film from American Wolf in London. Little Richard. Isabella Rosalini, okay. Deli Boar. <laughs> well, I mean, we know Ali Sheedy's in it because she's in the opening, but will we see the other people? I mean, maybe the idea is that you know, you had these crazy ideas, like Harry and the Hendersons is a crazy idea. Family hits a big foot. Take it home, become friends with it. Bill and Ted's X of the Avengers is a crazy idea. Kids need to finish a book report. They use a phone book to go through time. But at the same time, those are films I don't think the makers viewed it as a crappy film. And then they were good films that became a hit. I will say this film, The Pickle, is being well filmed with, you know, camera, camera work. Long zooms, camera going across the landscape. So there's Allie. I gotta say, if they're watching on a VHS tape, this is a good looking VHS tape. <laughs> I gotta say, as a plot for a film, though, it's like we get Ryan and we like no explanations of what's going on. <laughs> but damn, within the two minutes, it's already in space. Damn. Now Danny Aiello is smiling.
Are we doing your explanation as to why he was so angry and upset with her being there? Is it because he didn't want her to see his failure? Something else. So Dan Danny is okay now we definitely in a flashback is now okay now they use the black and white. I guess they want to use it for when he's a kid. I mean I don't think it's a four point four out of ten bad so far, but I will say it's not really that funny of a movie. It's not really that dramatic of a movie it's kind of seems like just going all over the place kind of messy where it's here's this character oh here's this fan that screws him here's this dying cannon and then there's the daughter or then here's the girlfriend and then here's a flashback and it's just like DC's kind of thrown at you and I don't know if they're just not a natural flow to it, or the story it just... Okay, so he remembered having a drink as a kid. A float. Like, was that really a necessary... Was that really a necessary flashback? Hey, let him remember a time where he got a drink from, <laughs> you know. I don't know if that was really a necessary flashback that needed to be in there. But he's a kid and he had a drink. Having a, that's like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something similar. You know, about character going through trials and tribulations. <clears throat> I down on his luck. Any down on his luck private eye movie, cop movie. Like Al Pacino in Heat. You know, he's not going through the best of times. You know, there's this stuff going on with this lady he likes. His wife, ex-wife. But then let's have a flashback where he went to a coffee shop and had a coffee. And then... That's the only time it's referenced. So here's Shelly Winters. So she plays Danny Aiello's mom. And she hates the Celtics. Some parts, that'd be blasphemy to say that. Some would be like, yeah, I fully agree. I mean, there was a point in time when the Celt Celtics just kept winning over and over and over again. Way back to the day. But in the 90s, now it was Chicago Bulls. <laughs> I need a youth transplant. Bring him back to 35. I'll jog every day, I promise. I do like chili winners.
So now he's reminiscing of another project, like Huckleberry Finn, but another project he wanted to do. Which, I mean, there's a lot of directors that have those projects that they wish they could have done. I mean, Sylvester Sloan, for example, he always wanted to do a movie on Edgar Allan Poe and call it Poe. And it uh, never happened. You know, you would think with the amount of money Stallone made throughout the years, getting these $20 million paychecks, which I don't know how he spent all that damn money. I know taxes take a chunk of it, but even then, even with taxes, if you did $20 million paychecks, you should be set for life. And with the amount of money he made... It feels like he spent a lot of it. And that's why he's willing to do, like, reality shows with his daughters and sell, you know, what, Cobra toys. There's that Cobra action figure thing, which uh, was too expensive for me. But, like, stuff he would never be caught doing, you know, a decade before. But it's like, what is going on? Doing movies like Bat Trace. Why are you doing films like Bat Trace? Or Steep Plan 2? Or Steep Plan 3? Why are you doing films like Expendables 4? It's these paychecks that he feels like he needs. I'm like, you should have saved your money, and then you could have taken a check of your money, self finance it, and direct Poe. Your dream project. So that, at least, is a little bit more of an interesting flashback where you tell a bit of his parents were fighting, his parents didn't get along, but he was able to be the common ground, and he tells his joke. Like, what's, what's a car and flies and a garbage truck? Because it's a vehicle, but yeah, flies buzzing to this thing. Oh, this guy, the driver, I know him. Like, he was in 2010, the year we made Contact. And he was also in the director's uh, Miles Down the Hudson. He was Robin Williams' Robin Williams' Russian buddy. Well, he played Russian too, but they were both playing Russians. They were buddies in Miles Down the Hudson, that guy, Robin Williams. And again, the driver, he was in 2010, the year we made Contact with Roy Scheider. He was a guy trying to get along with John Lithgow's character, and they became kind of friendly with each other. Great movie, 2010. So he was in that movie. Oh, that's interesting. He tells the story to his people, and then they, the director decided to put a flying pickle during this whole scene. Like, obviously, this idea is supposed to be so ridiculous. Everyone in spandex and these glasses, they'll like. They look like Mike Myers and SNL. What was that character? 
doing the in vogue thing. I forget what the hell his name was. Oh, is that Deli Moore? So... Oh, shit. Let's see. Dieter, that's what it was. If you looked up uh, Dieter, that's what it reminds me. Sprockets. That's what it reminds me of Sprockets. Which I know at one point Mike Myers was going to do a movie on Sprockets, but what happened was they got decently far into the project. And things fell apart where he, they were writing the script and they had another draft and then he just did not want to continue with the film. He just did not want to do the film. He changed his mind. And yet he just left the project. Yeah, Mike Myers, Will Ferrell, David Hasselhoff, Jack Black. Canceled in 2000 after Myers became dissatisfied with his own script. The studio sued Mike Myers for $3.8 million spent in pre-production costs. They had a second lawsuit. And yeah, people are mowing outside. You're wondering what that noise is. Then Imagine Entertainment sent him a second lawsuit. Mike Myers claimed he had not approved the screenplay, but who wrote the screenplay? Mike Myers himself. Millions were spent in pre-production. Myers countersued both parties. Both losses were later, later settled out of court, whereupon Myers and his buddies agreed to make another film with both Universal and Imagine as a replacement for that Sprockets film. And that became the cat in the hat. Which was a fucking disaster of a movie. <laughs> that was an awful as hell movie. <clears throat> I like that little bit of business like he just sees her race and thinks she's from Japan and she's like I'm from Syracuse New York right <laughs> the film itself it just if it's supposed to be this building anxiety of this guy I think it needs to be like a bit of a tighter pace it needs to be a bit of a almost as if the real life incidents are becoming a screwball comedy unto itself where things are a lot more snappy the dialogue is a little bit more peppy and the pacing is a bit more of a zippy faster pace He's nervous about the movie taking it out on you. I guess that's the most explanation we'll get out of it. <clears throat> yeah, would you really want to do this in front of a writer? It's like, here's a girl who is much younger than you, wearing a t-shirt with a giant pickle on it, and you're feeding her like this stuff.
Now that guy in the white tuxedo, I know I've seen him before and stuff too. I'm trying to think though what uh, I've seen him in. I think he was in the first Bad Boys movie. Let me see if I looked at the cast. I think it's Julio Oscar Mich Michoso. I think it's him. Yeah, he was in Virus, he was in Blue Street, he was in Jurassic Part 3. He was in Bad Boys. Cortez and Montezuma with Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty. Oh, she's supposed to be 22 in this film. Of course, Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty, they were part of an infamous flop. That, uh, oh my. How the hell do I not remember the damn movie? It was maybe because it was so damn bad. Ishtar. God, can't believe I forgot that movie. But that was an infamous flop, Ishtar, that. I think I've seen the film once. It was just more boring than anything. Was it a good movie? I don't think so, no. Is it one of the worst films of all time? No. It was just very... Kind of forgettable and boring. That I think that was his worst sin. So that seemed like a pretty big jab at Warren Beatty. You're too old for Warren Beatty. I'm only 22. So... Ah, Chris Penn. Love Chris Penn. I, I always liked him more than Sean Penn. I mean, Sean Penn, he's good in films like Couch Duties of War and Animal House. But Chris Penn was always the guy that I thought was more interesting. Rather be in Reservoir Dogs, Best of the Best 1 and 2. Passed away way too soon in 2006. Even in like the first rush hour, he was great in that. At close range, he was in Mobsters, True Romance. Sadly, later on, he didn't really have a lot of big roles. I mean, he was in Stealing Harvard with Jason Lee and Tom Green. True Guy Number Two and Mast and Anonymous. Something called Teen of Sorrow. Which was released after he passed away. So. Which is too bad. I just always thought he had a lot of great talent. Well, not even not more ridiculous than a flying pickle. <laughs> I 
All the people don't buy. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. He says no one's going to buy a strip of a talking cat. That would make more sense than the pickle movie because how many movies have we had about talking cats? We had that cats and dogs movie and the sequels to it. Garfield just came out. There were two live-action Garfield films with Bill Murray, and then anime film with Garfield. Well, at least this guy's being nice to him. So his son is trying to sell script about talking cat, which again, that would make more sense to see that movie would have made more sense as this is such a ridiculous movie. It's never going to sell well, but then it does like maybe we did like an actor who's a well-known actor. He's playing the cat and the cat's trying to be wise tracking and oh my God, this is going to be stupid. That to me would have made more sense than the pickle. Like again, the pickle they did to be so outrageous and so silly, and so stupid that to try to get laughs out of the audience but to me I just see it as like okay I just I just they thought it was more of a funny visual than I did if that made sense they thought man it's such a hilarious image of a pickle flying around and people don't laugh their balls off and it's like eh, I'm kind of indifferent at least to me I'll be right back. Do some real quick. I'm paused at 52 minutes and 4 seconds. 3, 2, 1, press and play now. So Chris Penn, Danny Aiello. So Danny Aiello, his son Chris Penn, and his girlfriend who's 22 years old. So that was a previous wife as well.
Hmm. Well, that's at least one benefit. So he had two alipo he had two alimony payments and one's gonna be gone, so there you go, that's something. <laughs> Got alimony payments. One of the re many reasons why I'm glad I'm not married to someone. <laughs> I'm like fuck playing Yeah, sign on a dotted nut line that we don't have to fucking pay for shit, then fine. <laughs> But pay for alimony, fuck that shit. Like I said, this movie, it kind of just wanders around without much of a flow to it. It's kind of, it's really not that interesting of a movie so far. Like, what he's going through, his story, it's not really that interesting of a story. It's kind of just... Okay, he's nervous about a movie, of course. He thinks it's crap. He treats his girlfriend like crap. His son wants to sell a strip. This woman in the alimony, all this other stuff. I don't know if I want to see a denial of sex scene. <laughs> That's the thing, though. It's not really that funny. Oh, he's got health problems. This lady doesn't know 911. So now we have a serious bit of business where he's having a heart attack. Okay, now he's having a heart attack. Another flashback to when he was a kid. Well, obviously this was all supposed to be this amalgamation of this guy and this one night before his premiere and his regrets, regrets on not making these films. It would have been nice to see, like, the films he wanted to make and, like, he pictures the films in his head. Uh, that would have been nice to see. <sighs> like I said, it does really have... Maybe this guy who's the director, he's not really the guy to write like very funny, witty strips. I don't know. I didn't see Down and Now in Beverly Hills, so maybe that works better than this. Like I said, it's definitely more of a hit. You're the doctor, you didn't want to call, like, no ambulance. <laughs> Dr. Spaulding? Uh-oh. You don't want to go to a hospital with an ambulance and stuff? Okay. 
I mean, if you need help, there's not real much he can do with his damn badge. The suit case he has. This is Dr. Trevortian. Jesus Christ. He's going to tell from your blood pressure how long you've got? <laughs> be a hell of a damn doctor. He'd be part psychic. Is it going to be like this heartburn or something? Or indigestion or something? Acute indigestion. I haven't said yet, yeah, but indigestion. Like this whole scene, it just, there's nothing to it. It's like there's no excitement, there's no laughs. There's, I mean, why, I don't know why there'd be laughs, to be honest, but I mean, I guess the, we've already showcased how nervous he is. I thought the scene worked better with in the shop with the guy, like having the device. Oh, it's 180. I'm a dead man. No, no, just calm down, calm down. Just, you know, breathe, breathe, you know. I saw one of these to Woody Allen. <laughs> what was his readings? I can't tell. You. Like that worked a little bit better within the scene compared to this, but <sighs> this movie, this movie just comes off as kind of boring, to be honest. Hate to say it, but I can't say I really care one way or another about what's going on. If I'm being fair, well, well, people said maybe I'm not being fair, but I just, it's okay. I can see why this film bombed. <laughs> I can see why I never heard of this film either. I think Jacob mentioned it in a live stream, like in the comments section, and, uh, I mean, I don't know if he's a big fan of this movie. I'm assuming he thinks the film's, like, very underrated. Like I said, I'll do any pay requests for any commentaries or reviews or what have you. Be my guest. I'll gladly do it. Um, I might not share the same sentiments, but, you know, feel free. There's always the chance. So now she's going to watch the, the pickle. So I want to see more footage from the film. Cleveland, the White House. Uh, Little Richard as the president. And there's Griffin Dunn. From American Wolf in London and uh, After Hours. Okay, because they're on the other planet.
And Crystal and Richard start saying, Do Dolly Miss Ma. Do Dolly Miss Molly. And all of a sudden they start dancing. <laughs> I, I, I gotta admit, the idea of Little Richard being the president of anything is kind of a fun idea, I gotta say. <laughs> I had to say it, the Pickle movie might be a little bit more interesting than the movie we're watching. I mean, that seems bad, but it seems more interesting. I mean, Little Richard is the president, and Ali Sheedy is the lead, and Dudley Moore appears. And... It just seems like random scenes. Like, you could put a lot of these, like, in different spots. Like, you could switch up so many of these scenes and it would have the same feel. Like, you could put this scene earlier, you could put this scene later, and all this other stuff, and it wouldn't make a whole lot, a whole lot of difference, it seems. I don't know, just... Okay, I was going to say uh, it must be Diane Cannon's character. So she's with this. So he's with this girl who adores him, this twenty-two-year-old, and he's nice to her. But then, like, he's not really the most likable guy. I mean, he's he's got a girlfriend, but then he sleeping with that fan earlier in the movie. Then he wants to get with Diane Cannon, and now he wants to jump out the window. See, I honestly thought Danny Aiello worked better in comedy in Hudson Hawk. See, Hudson Hawk was labeled as such a disaster movie, and while that is a flawed film, I quite like Hudson Hawk. I think that's actually kind of funny and entertaining, and there's still moments I still chuckle. Uh, will you play Nintendo with me? I think Danny Aiello worked very well with Bruce Willis, and he got some laughs out of me um, in that film. And when they're singing the song, side by side. <laughs> this, like, Danny is such a good actor, but... I'm sure he took the chance because he gets to be the lead, and here's a director that's done films that were nominated for Academy Awards and then they did Down and Out in Beverly Hills that was a hit Richard Dreyfuss did Nolte which again I've never seen that one they bet Midler was in that one so now he wants to get back with Diane Cannon I mean it's kind of a Stevie move like let me threaten to jump off and die so please be with me just a very Stevie Moved by this guy. I mean, I will admit, I mean, I like the actor, but it's kind of hard for me to root for this guy. <laughs> That's just me. Like, why should I root for this guy? Like, at times, is quite a bit too, if I don't want to say serious, but a bit too... Oh, there's Steven Tobolowski with the glasses. It's Ned Ryerson.
he was also in The Glimmer Man with Steven Seagal. He's been in quite a few stuff, Steven, Steven Tobolowski. I bet you want lots of it. Sorry, I'm listening to the dialogue, so that's why I'm... So you have the guy that came up with the idea, the executive, who loves, you know, his own idea. So you have Danny Aiello, the artist, that wants to tell these deep stories, and then you have the executive that wants to just, you know, make popcorn entertainment. See, like, this whole bit here at the dinner, this conversation, it, it kind of just dragged out with, ah, uh, here's the, the ticker, he wants to make a modern, East LA modern take, and that's going to upset Danny Aiello's character. It just feels as if the scenes are stretched out way too long. You know, a film that, that's very well done with its dialogue is a film like Sweeners 
or clerks. And that's the thing, like you're this is the era of the nineties where you have Tarantino coming up, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Tim is sort of coming up with Clerks and Mole Rats and Dogma. You got what was it? Uh, John Favreau, you know, Sweeners and these other movies. Like much more of this eclectic dialogue and snappy banter and to really dive deep into the characters and the chemistry and this needed something like that. I think I'm curious. Did, did this guy write all of his scripts? Let me see. Yes, apparently he did. So he did write his strips. Including the ones that got nominated for Oscars, which were Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, An Unmarried Woman, Harry and Tonto, and Enemies of Love Story. Known for his dramatic comedies that often deal with modern social issues. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know then. So obviously he had success in doing other films. See, I'd be more interested about the making of the picture. And I think that's what I would rather have seen. I would much rather have seen the making of the picture. We have a director that doesn't believe in what he's doing. You have actors. Maybe some of them are gun ho about it, but some of them they're taking a paycheck. The producer or the executive on set who's really dumb about the idea is going to be success, and then fighting with the director who thinks it's going to be a piece of shit, but he's directed in any way. I try to take a piece of like real life events, real life stories of of stuff. I don't know. Sprockets, you know, Dieter. Yeah, this part of the film, I don't really care about this stuff. If you want to own your copy of the Cleveland Bible, call 1 800 Bible. I tried, yeah, I will try to take back what I said. It does look like a really crappy movie. You, you, I could see why he would be not gun ho about this. So obviously this is a buddy from back in the day when he was a kid.
So he sees a childhood friend who's going to retire. He mentions about this rabbi girl that he kissed. But I guess, like, what was the whole point of the scene? Was it to reminisce about how things were better back then? Or how he wish maybe he wishes would have taken a different path and not be a director at all? Or he has regrets of the past that he wish he could fix? Or maybe showing, like, his love of cinema and how he grew in love with cinema in the first place? So it's a flash when he was a kid and the family will listen to a record. So you got goosebumps from listening to music. I mean, wouldn't it make sense he got goosebumps from watching a film? And then this one of the reasons why he wanted to become a filmmaker? Like he watched a movie, he watched something, and it's like, oh, I got goosebumps. And like, wouldn't it make sense if he was, that happened when he's watching a film and I listened to a damn music? That's just me, though. So the preview for the film is tonight. But I think he mentioned he doesn't go to his premieres. <laughs> oh, there's his girlfriend. So this is a guy that was literally ready to jump out of a window and try to deal with Diane Cannon at the end. And then he's like now kissing this girl and... <sighs> oh god. I'll be right back. Hey there, sorry for all the stops. I just, like, this time, I'm like, I just had to get up and walk around because I was going to fall asleep, to be honest. I'm 123.26 into us. Unpause now. Yeah, we're getting, like, the last bit of the movie. I hate to say it, I'm sorry, Jacob. I'm just not a fan of the film. If you're a fan of the film, that's cool, that's no problem, um, nothing wrong with that. We're now going to like the same thing. We'll still be happy to take requests from you if you feel like it. Maybe be like after this, he's Jacob may be like, screw this, I'm not requesting anything from this asshole again, which I don't blame you. Cool to have all the t actors here in the same scene, Chris Penn, Shelley Winters, Diane Cannon, Jerry Stiller, everybody, so that's nice to see. Good luck on the pickle. <laughs> uh, of course, the executive Steven Tobolowski there, the executive guys there, all that stuff, so. Then I see that everybody who is in the film pretty much is in this.
It's like everybody kissing him. Oh, you see she avoided the, the moth kiss. She did a little swerve, so that, I wonder if that's telling about their future or a lot thereof. So as a guy that doesn't go to his own premieres, which... It's not something I think like Spielberg and George Lucas and them do. Like they... I don't know, they go on vacation or something like that each time a movie premieres. Something to that nature. Oh, this is Evie in water again. So now he's recording a tape recorder. Remember tape records were a theme back in the day? I used to have one way back in the day. Never used it a lot though. Nowadays it's like you just record, you know, have a cell phone recorded and stuff. So it's like him giving his last will and testament. <laughs> he just cannot get his words out. Now, see, if he was apologetic throughout the movie, like he does stuff, then he's apologetic, then he does stuff, he's apologetic. You see him throughout how he's apologetic throughout from time to time. Then maybe this would be a little bit more understandable. So this is definitely a bit where he's saying all this because he wants to end it all. But it's like fate or some higher power just keeps interrupting and saying, yeah, you know what? Maybe don't do this. You know what would be funny if someone came in and realized what he was doing, then takes a tape recorder, and then he's like, give it back. Oh no, give it back. And like a fun back or forth where they kind of chase each other, and like one's trying to get the other, and then the one guy like throws it out the window. What the fuck do you do that for? Can't tell him. So, you can't do anything to yourself because you can't tell him what you wanted, so tough.
maintain my pressure as I kiss off. I mean, Danny is doing a good job in this scene, I'll give you that. He's doing a very good job. It's just, I don't think the rest of the movie earns this, to be honest. At least to me. I mean, other than him thinking this movie's going to suck, it just... We see him treat the girl, well I guess that's his point, like, he's tired of being a pain, he's tired of being an ass. But at the same time, like, we don't see, like, Shelly Winters being mad and them fighting with each other. We don't see uh, Diane Cannon, like, they're kind of goofing on each other, but nothing really of any animosity. The daughter, there's no, like back to four where there's good times but there's bad times you see none of the bad times with the daughter the granddaughter like cried a little bit but I mean I guess him yelling at the I would say only the the Paris girl is really the only one you could argue that you could make sense with his statements At least to me. But, uh. I mean, Danny Aiello is doing a good job. He's a great actor. I know all the mowing outside. <laughs> hey, what can you do? It's the summer. It is what it is. Well. Close enough to the summer. <laughs> so now it's a black and white flashback to the funeral of his dad. I think his dad. So what, how was he going to do it? Did he take too many pills? Or was there another way of doing it? Or he just passed out and slept? <laughs> like he said he wanted to do it, but he didn't really say how. So someone calls and says, you got hit on your hands. They love it. Just the audience loved it. Ah, uh, there's the pills. All right, he's picked it up the rest. Okay. That reminds me of what was that one movie? Was it The Player? The one with Tim Robbins, where it's like it was the movie within the movie with Bruce Willis and was it Julia Roberts? And it's like a jail rock jail set, jailhouse rock set where they hug and it's trying to be like this. Where a lot of movies don't even end this way, at least not for the longest time to, since like the 50s or something, but, you know.
Oh, that's Isabella Rosalini. My man, man knew she looked familiar. <laughs> yeah, here's an apple for you. Be like that movie, The Apple. That was a bomb. I don't see why would an audience like this movie. See, if they made the movie like kind of a fun, goofy, you know, yes, yeah, silly, but it's like okay, I can see why people like this film. Granted, it'd be like, well, yeah, people want to see that more than the actual film, but at the same time, you gotta make it appealing enough that yeah, you do buy that the audience in this world would enjoy that movie, and enough to be a hit. But I don't see it. I mean, the little Richard got me a little bit. Like, okay, yeah, maybe that scene, I can see why. But the rest of it, not so much. So I guess you say this is like the fairy tale ending for Danny Aiello's character. Okay, he's so high on dress, he's now seen a flying pickle. Okay. I do imagine this, the effects guys, like, okay, what effects do you want us to do? A spaceship? Okay, well, it's a pickle. Wait, a what? Yeah, it's a pickle. We need to have a pickle fly. We gotta put these lights on it, so it's like, okay. And then the movie's over. So really, like, nothing about his life we really see, like, what's going to change. Is he going to be with the, the French Paris lady, or is he not? Is he finally going to say, listen, it's time for you to move on, don't be with me? Or is he going to deal with Diane Cannon, or no? Uh, I mean... The movies like make it seem like as if it doesn't even matter if it's a hit or not. Because he still made a film that he's not happy with, is that artistically great. By just the fact it's a hit now his his troubles are all over, even personal wise. I'm like, that doesn't change your personal life. Doesn't change your love life, does it but I guess it does for him, which seems I almost want to say superficial, but okay. I guess we gotta have this happy, 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 joy, joy ending. Yeah, I was not a fan of this film. Uh, this film I thought was fairly slow. I thought it was fairly boring. I got a couple of... <laughs> if you wonder why that was abruptly cut off... 
believe it or not, I have my headphones. They fell and it hit the damn power cord, shut it off, and shut the camera off because it's plugged in. As I was saying, my final thoughts on the pickle it's not for me, it's not my cup of tea. Danny Aiello, I liked as an actor. While I think the speech was a bit too long, close to being melodramatic, I thought Danny did the best he could. It was cool to see people like Shelley Winters in there. It was kind of fun in a goofy way to see the movie within the movie with Little Richard as the president and Ali Sheedy and other actors, Deli Moore in one bit. Um, it wasn't enough to compensate for a story that kind of meandered and I don't think there was much of a flow to it. I don't think there's really much witty satire of the entertainment industry. It's kind of hard for me to root for Danny Aiello's character because, and then he even brings up he's not that great of a guy, but then, like, just because his movie's a hit, now everything's fine and dandy, which doesn't really solve all of his issues. That if this is about how he wasn't a great guy, then it doesn't matter if the film's a hit or not. So, like, which is it? Are you mad that you. You don't consider yourself a great guy. But I guess you say, well, because of these bombs, he was in this headspace. Well, what happens if the Nets and Nets film is a flop? Will it go back to the same downward spirals? Like, did he really learn anything? Was there an actual arc for the character? I, that's, uh, it just wasn't for me. If it's for other people, that's cool. But, just not for me. I can see... The 4.4 IMDb, watching the full film as is, I can see why it has that low of a rating. If, if Jacob, if you liked it, that's cool. Just not for me. But with that said, thanks once again. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.